Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Now, I've done ranking videos in the past, mainly focusing on things that are powerful, but what I haven't done yet is step too far outside of this realm focusing on power. With that said, today I want to look at, in my opinion, the 10 saddest moments from the Harry Potter series. Number 10, Hermione wiping her parents' memories. Near the beginning of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1, the Wizarding World was in turmoil. The imminent threat of Voldemort and the Death Eaters meant that not only witches and wizards were in danger, but muggles too. Knowing that the danger would eventually stretch beyond the confines of the Wizarding World, Hermione Granger knew that she would have to make a difficult choice, a choice involving her parents. Effectively, what Hermione needed to do was erase her parents' memories. This would disassociate them from her, and possibly save their lives, as they couldn't possibly reveal information about someone that they had never met. In this horrifyingly sad moment, Hermione erased every memory that they ever had of her. What made this moment even sadder was that Hermione was completely unsure if she would ever see them again. Number 9. Cedric's Death Now, whether you're a filmgoer or a book reader, the untimely death of Cedric Diggory was no doubt impactful. It happened during the third challenge of the Triwizard Tournament, just after Harry and Cedric simultaneously clutched the Triwizard Cup. Unbeknown to them, however, the Triwizard Cup was actually a port key, a port key that sent them straight to Wormtail, Voldemort, and the Little Hangleton graveyard. It was here that Cedric lived out his final moments, ultimately reaching his fate at the hands of Peter Pettigrew and his killing curse. The Goblet of Fire was dark. It was made abundantly clear that Voldemort had in fact returned, and Hogwarts, the Wizarding World, lost the life of a promising young wizard that stood for what was right. What made Cedric's death even more sad was witnessing his father, Amos Diggory, realizing that his son, whom he was immensely proud of, had in fact passed away. Number 8. Draco Malfoy's Breakdown Now, Draco Malfoy isn't exactly the typical type of character that you'd feel sorry for. Right from the beginning of the books, films, Draco exhibits questionable behavior. He is the archetypal bully, and this bullying only intensifies over the years as he develops into a young man. As Draco grows older, we witness firsthand his evolution from petulant but innocent little boy to sinister and dark young man. What really set him off was the imprisonment of his father after the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, a battle that effectively served as the catalyst and first major conflict of the Second Wizarding War. From that point onward, Draco felt the immense pressure and burden of living up to the Malfoy family name. This meant becoming a Death Eater and serving the Dark Lord. This also meant that he was tasked with killing Dumbledore. However, in the Half-Blood Prince, it becomes abundantly clear that Draco has a lot of internal conflict. He doesn't want to do these things or become this person, but he feels that he has to, that it is his duty. In one particular scene in the Half-Blood Prince, we see all of these conflicting emotions at play, a scene where Draco lets it all come out as he cries alone in the boy's bathroom, unsure of what he has become. In this scene, I couldn't help but feel sorry for the boy that was just raised the wrong way. The boy that didn't want to be bad, but never had a choice. Number 7. Hedwig's Death The death of an animal companion is never easy. One of the reasons for this is that, though you are able to communicate with them on some level, it's hard to convey how you truly feel. Hedwig was given to Harry right to the beginning of his journey into the Wizarding World, and Hedwig stuck by Harry's side through thick and thin. When Harry was stuck at the Dursley's place on Privet Drive, with no one else to speak to, Hedwig was there for him. Tragically, in the Battle of the Seven Potters, Hedwig is killed while aboard Hagrid's flying motorcycle, hit with a killing curse. The curse was likely aimed at Harry, but Hedwig took the hit, and Harry felt guilty for this. What made things worse was that Harry then had to destroy the sidecar carrying Hedwig in order to better escape the Death Eaters. The death of Hedwig is sudden, tragic, and life-changing for Harry. Hedwig's death was almost symbolic for the loss of innocence in the Harry Potter films. Number 6. Dumbledore Dies As we know, Dumbledore dies in the Half-Blood Prince. This scene is perhaps more shocking than sad to most, as Dumbledore is always portrayed as this sort of beacon of hope, of power. Dumbledore always has all of the answers, and if things go awry, you can always count on Dumbledore. But suddenly, in the blink of an eye, the seemingly omniscient Hogwarts headmaster that you can always count on is gone. Of course, we sort of knew that Dumbledore was going to die, and that he was incredibly ill from the curse on his hand, but it just somehow didn't feel real. Dumbledore is certainly a fan favorite, 
and to suddenly lose this beloved Hogwarts headmaster just felt wrong. The absence of Dumbledore in the story was incredibly apparent, and it left the Harry Potter world feeling a bit vacant. Number 5. Sirius Dies Sirius Black, friend of Harry's parents and Harry's godfather, was tragically killed in the Order of the Phoenix. More specifically, he died during the battle at the Department of Mysteries, an important battle and one of the primary catalysts of the Second Wizarding War. Just two short books prior, Harry and Sirius were first introduced, and from Harry's perspective, Sirius went from murderer and Azkaban escapee to one of the most important people in his life. His death was tragic, because for so many years, Sirius wanted to reach Harry, but was unable. The pair, though close, spent a relatively small amount of time together, but did form a strong bond in that short period. Sirius dying was terrible for Harry, but what made it even worse was that, in a way, he had lost another connection to his parents. Number 4. Dobby's Death This one doesn't need much explaining. The death of Dobby was tragic, whichever way you look at it. The mistreated house elf that had finally been liberated by Harry Potter would have done anything for Harry, and he really proved that when he took a knife to the chest. When everyone apparated out of Malfoy Manor, they landed at a beach by Shell Cottage. It was at this beach that everyone realised Dobby had been hit with Bellatrix's knife. Number 3. Snape's Death For the vast majority of the Harry Potter story, Snape is the bad guy. He looks around, bullies students, and is particularly awful to Harry. This treatment doesn't change over the years, either, but perhaps only intensifies as Harry grows into a young man. But what many didn't know was that Snape was a double agent. He was playing a part, and both sides were convinced that he was on their side. By the time Snape dies, we become completely aware of his true intentions, and where his true motivations lay. However, while we, the audience, are aware of all of this, Harry isn't. To Harry, Snape is still the two-faced Death Eater that killed Dumbledore and swore his allegiance to Voldemort. However, after Harry watches Snape being fatally attacked by Nagini, something begins to change in Harry's mind. Snape was in a state unlike anything that Harry had ever seen before. The strong, enigmatic Snape was suddenly so helpless, and it's at this point that the idea is planted in Harry's mind that perhaps Snape isn't quite as bad as he thought. After giving Harry some of his memories, which will reveal to Harry Snape's true motivations, Snape dies looking into the eyes of a boy that was more significant to him than Harry ever knew. The boy that shared the same face as the man that bullied him for his entire childhood, and the eyes of the only woman that he ever loved. Number 2. Death of Fred Weasley In my opinion, the death of Fred Weasley, twin brother to George Weasley, is one of the saddest moments in the entire series. I say this because twins share a special relationship. They're almost like one person, and so I can't begin to imagine what losing your other half would be like. Fred dies from an explosion outside the room of requirement, and it doesn't take long for George to realise that his world would be turned upside down. Their friendship was beautiful, and though George still had the rest of his family with him, he certainly lost a piece of himself that day. I sincerely doubt that he was ever the same. Number 1. The End this might be a cop-out, but for me, the saddest part of the Harry Potter story was its end. I'm sure that I speak for many others as well when I say that I wish the Harry Potter story could continue forever. What are your top 10 saddest moments? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.